Welcome to this lecture on pre-stressed concrete structures. So this is a continuation of my previous lecture on pre-stressed concrete structures, which covered the following. What are pre-stressed concrete structures? The concept of pre-stressing, the behavior of pre-stressed concrete member, the types of pre-stressing, the materials used and the applications. So in this lecture, we'll be going through the terminologies that are involved in the field of pre-stressed concrete structures and then the concept of analysis of stress. So a few terminologies that are commonly used. The first one is wire. So wire is a single unit made of steel. So uh, it's just a thin wire. Strands are a combination of wires. So it could be uh, two or three or seven, five. So the number of wires are wound together so that you can see it on this picture. So you can see strands of wires. The next terminology is tendon. Tendon is a group of strands or wires used to form a pre-stressing tendon. So we have seen what is a pre-stressing uh, tendon. So this is a group of strands. The cable is a group of tendons forming a pre-stressing the cable. And bars, it is a tendon that can be made of a single steel bar. So it is like a one uh, round circular section. So the diameter of this bar will be much higher than the wire. So as you can imagine, wire would, could be uh, more flexible also than the bar. So these are few um, pictures showing the wires, the strands. And these are the ducts, pre-stressing ducts that are laid into the concrete within which these tendons and these strands will be placed. So these pipes could be of uh, aluminum or generally we use high density polyethylene or sheet metal sheathings. So these are called as the sheathings or the ducts. And these are the other uh, components that are used. This is the anchorage. This is how the anchorage is done of the pre-stressing outside the member. And that anchoring um, setup includes the actual duct and there will be a bearing plate and there will be a wedge plate on which these wedges are there. So in these wedges only you can have the strands locked. So the locking is done and and that will form the anchorage part of the pre-stress uh, pre concrete member. And here that you see are the uh, wedges that are used to lock. So anchorage in post-tensioning, a device is used to anchor the tendon to the concrete member. In pre-tensioning, this device is used to hold the tendon during the hardening of the concrete. So what is meant by initial pre-stress? So initially the pre-stress, uh, some compressive, uh, some tensile force is applied on the tendons and there is a, this tensile force is transferred to the concrete in terms of pre-stress or pre-compressive stresses. So that is called as the initial pre-stress. Transfer means the act of transferring the stress in pre-stressing tendons from the jacks or the pre-tensioning bed to the concrete member. So the bond between the steel and the concrete, there we use these terms uh, transfer. So few more pictures to show you um, the pre-tensioning, uh, post-tensioning and the ducts. So the long uh, tube that you can see is a duct. And here is the place where we are going to have the anchorage. So you can see here there are four cables running through four ducts so within that you will have few strands so the number of um, how many ever strands we have that will be fixed into these wedges so wedges can be opened and it has to be the wire the strand will be sent inside this wedge so you can see here so this is the uh, bearing plate you can see the wedges uh, locking the uh, strands and then you will have the wedge plate which will lock this entire system. Once this is completely locked and then we will be applying the pre-stressing force using a uh, controlled jack. And once the uh, 
pre-stressing is completed you need to duct uh, grout inside the duct wherever you have space and then you close the anchorages and you can see here the closed anchorages in a pre-stressed girder in this example so these are different cross sections that can be used in a pre-stressed concrete member you can have a t section double t sections you can use pre-stressed concrete in piles uh, in hollow core sections l sections inverted t sections and i girders so we'll see the stages of loading so the analysis of pre-stressed members can be different for the different stages of loading so initially where you have uh, during the tensioning of the steel using the jack or at the transfer of pre-stress to the concrete the tensile stresses from the steel and it gets transferred to the concrete that can be uh, taken as the initial stage or the intermediate stage it includes the load during transportation of the pre-stressed members and the final stage we could say that it is at service during operation so when the member is in actual service life when it is uh, subjected to the actual loads it was intended to that will be the final stage at ultimate it means due to the extreme events where you uh, when it is subjected to the maximum loads so these stages can also include like lifting transporting hoisting and launching uh, for example in the case of construction of like big flyovers or uh, metro bridges you have this pre-stress girder long pre-stress girders that are cast and then it is launched or it is hoisted onto the uh, piers so that during that uh, hoisting and launching there can be some load transfer there could be stage of decompression and if there could be some uh, loading when uh, there is a cracking then stages of limiting internal forces and then you have the stages of limiting serviceability so now we'll see the analysis of uh, sections of a pre-stress concrete member so this picture was seen in the previous lecture while uh, learning about the behavior of a pre-stress concrete member so generally the first picture where it shows the reinforced concrete member you have a beam uh, the beam would be initially horizontal and then you apply some typical load which is transverse load and the beam will bend and the reinforcement at the bottom which is good in tension will take care of the tensile stresses at the bottom and at the top you have compressive stresses which will be taken care by the concrete. So once the load is increased you can see uh, cracks occurring and later on it could fail. When it comes to pre-stressed concrete, be it pre-tensioned mem uh, member or a post-tensioned member, initially before the service condition itself, so once it is um, constructed, you can see that the beam will have a slight camber, upward camber, so that when there is, uh, you know, for the dead load itself and when it is put into working uh, period at the service time, the loads will make the beam to come you no know, like you can see here for the full service load it will try to become horizontal member and for excessive loading and only then it will sag downwards which can still be carried by the pre-stress concrete member so obviously uh, this behavior depicts that this pre-stress concrete beam can carry more load than an rc uh, beam of the same size so here at the bottom you have the pre-stressing tendons which are subjected to tension force that causes a compressive stresses in the concrete so that is why you have a upper camber at first and then when it is loaded it comes to a uh, horizontal position and it is able to carry and when you have excess load the steel is again good in tension so it can take care of the tensile stresses that will occur at the bottom of the beam so this is another graphical presentation uh, to show that so it is an unstressed beam so the load is deflected now when the tendons are stressed you have pre-stressing force the tendons are pulled but the actual force transfer there is compressive stresses 
so we had seen some examples of rubber band being um, pulled so in it is similar to that and then you have this pre-stress deflection so initially because of pre-stressing we say it is a upper camber right so that we will call it as a deflection which is upwards and when the load is occurring and because of those gravity loading whatever deflection you will have that will be the negative deflection so basic assumptions in the analysis of stresses in a pre-stressed concrete member concrete is homogeneous and elastic material Hooke's law is applicable to concrete and steel within the limits of deformation plane section remains plane even after bending the stress and reinforcement do not change along the length of the reinforcement that is the stress changes takes place for concrete only and change in loading results in concrete only change of stress in reinforcement due to change in the external loading is uh, ignored so the stresses due to pre stressing alone are generally combined stresses due to the action of direct load and the bending resulting from an eccentrically applied loads the stresses in concrete are evaluated by using the well known relationship for combined stresses so to analyze the stresses in a pre stressed concrete member we have three different concepts so one is the stress concept then we have the strength and then the load balancing concept so the stress concept what it says is that you know when you apply the tensile stresses to the steel that is being counteracted by some compressive stresses that is uh, transfer to the uh, concrete so we see that when the beam is loaded usually at the bottom of the beam we will have the tensile stresses but that is again counteracted by these compressive stresses that are uh, already given by these tendons so this is the stress concept or the equilibrium of the stresses is done in the strength concept the steel takes up tension and concrete takes up compression that we know and the two materials form a couple resisting the external moment so in terms of force and force into the lever arm the moment based on the moment when we analyze the sections then we call that as the strength concept and the third one is the load balancing concept where what we are trying to tell you is when you apply some loads on a horizontal beam and uh, like for example a simply supported beam with urial throughout we will have uh, say we have a parabolic uh, deflection so what is done here we uh, have we apply the pre stressing cables already in this parabolic um, profile and it is being pre uh, given it is uh, tensioned so that when the load is applied it comes to the horizontal or the normal position right so balancing of the load on the structure by choosing a appropriate profile of the cable that is considered in the load balancing concept so in this lecture we will be seeing the analysis of sections using the stress concept so we generally have a cross section when you apply pre stressing force so when you apply pre stressing force it can be uh, either axial pre stressing forces or it can be eccentric forces so if it is axial forces the stress is going to be simply load by the cross sectional area so if you say f or capital p is the pre stressing force that force divided by the cross sectional area will be the pre stress the stress next because of the actual gravity loading because of the dead load you will have general stresses right so that is based on depends on the support conditions so for example you have um simply supported beam and it depends on the loading type if you have udl the moment is wl square by 8 right so similar to that so because of the dead load what is the stress so wl square by 8 is there so on the top you will have compressive stresses at the bottom you will have the tensile stresses so this is generally the stress diagram bending stress diagram 
similarly the third diagram is based on the live load that is present so again based on the live load say same simply supported beam with uriel you have wl square by 8 as a formula for the moment so that stress again on the top you will have compressive stresses at the bottom you will have the uh, negative or the tensile stresses so in a pre-stressed concrete member when it is put uh, experiencing load it will have this pre-stress and the stress due to the dead load stress due to the live load so putting all together to calculate the resultant you will have this so you have a large compressive forces on the top and very little or no tensile forces at the bottom of the beam this is when it is subjected to you know generally a dead load and a live load the second diagram it shows when uh, the blue color dot that you see is the pre-tensioning is done at an eccentricity from the neutral axis so this e naught is the eccentricity so when there is some eccentricity the stress due to pre the pre-stress itself is split into two that is one is assuming it is you know generally uh, through your know, axis so it becomes p by a or f by a is the first uniform stress the second part is going to be based on the eccentricity so generally your um, so moment so force into eccentricity will be the moment that is caused right so based on that moment divided by L, what you get is the stress due to the pre-stress force. And then you have the general stress due to the dead load and stress due to the live load. And adding, summing up all this for the resultant stresses, you will have a compressive stresses on the top and at the bottom you might have small compressive stresses too. So this will be your resultant stress diagram. So the concept of pre-stressing is this. You can imagine... Uh, beam with you know axial load or you know we generally talk about axial load in a column so it's similar to that so the stress will be simply that load divided by this cross-sectional area that is perpendicular to the pre-stressing force and the bending stresses that we are calculating based on the uh, gravity loading that is based on the dead load or live load or even the uh, eccentric pre-stressing force this is the formula stress is equal to m into y by i that is from our uh, uh, bending equation you generally get m by i is equal to f by y or m by i is equal to stress by y so from there we will get this stress diagram so this is a generally a stress diagram bending stress diagram for a rc cross section right so we assume that the above neutral axis we will have this distribution of the compressive stresses and where you have the reinforcement we consider it to have the tensile forces and we look into the equilibrium and based on that we find the uh, moment of resistance and everything so this is again where you have the strain diagram and the stress diagram for a rc member so this i was telling you that imagine a column where we talk about the uh, axial load so we have this as just you know um, axial forces and but when you have some eccentricity so from the axis there is some gap then you will have the second order effects that is one axial effect will be there p additionally this moment will be there which will be p into this eccentricity load into perpendicular distance so that has to be considered so considering all this that we saw initially right so uh, that is f uh, inf inferior is uh, f inferior and f superior or f top and f bottom these are all the stresses we are going to find at the topmost and at the bottommost level at the extreme levels where it is going to be uh, the most maximum or the minimum value of the stresses so we are uh, interested to know about the stresses at the topmost level at, at the bottommost level so as we saw how to calculate the resultant of stresses so that that is how this comes into picture so p by a plus when you have eccentricity you will have p by z at the top and at the bottom you will have p by z b 
which will be a tensile uh, at the bottom and compressive at the uh, top. Now this ZT and ZB are just the section modulus. So if it is a rectangular, if it is a rectangular cross section, then section modulus is I by Y, where I is the second moment of area and Y will be the distance between the neutral uh, centroid and the neutral axis and the extreme end fiber. So adding, summing up these, you will get the resultant stress diagram. So these formula that are given here are exactly depicting the same as this uh, diagram at the bottom for the resultant stresses. Now to that we add, so we have this stresses due to the priestess. In addition to that, we are going to add up the stresses due to the dead load and the live load. So when we do analysis of section in a priestess concrete member, generally we uh, take this compressive uh, stresses as positive and negative uh, tensile stresses as negative. So that is the sign convention that is used and that is what you can see here. So plus is for the compressive stresses and minus is for the uh, tensile stresses. And when you add up all this, you get these this as a resultant stress. So like I said here, it has been assumed that this mg is nothing but wL square by uh, 8 right so wl square by 8 is a moment divided by the section modulus that will be your bending stress so adding adding all this with the uh, concerned sign conventions at the top and the bottom you will get two formulae for the top and the bottom resultant stresses so that is given here separately so f at the top is p by a minus p by zt where this first um, the two terms under Inside these parentheses, it is about the pre-stress. The third term mg by zt is regarded, consider, uh, regarding the dead load. And then plus the last one mq by zt is with respect to the live load. F inferior or the stress at the bottommost level is p by a plus p, p by zb minus mg by zb minus mq by zb. So we'll see few uh, problems related to this. So in this problem, a rectangular concrete beam of cross section 30 centimeter deep and 20 centimeter wide is pre-stressed by means of 15 wires of 5 mm diameter located 6.5 centimeter from the bottom of the beam and three wires of diameter of 5 mm 2.5 centimeter from the top. Assuming that the pre-stress in the steel as 840 Newton per mm square, calculate the stresses at the extreme fibers of the mid-span section when the beam is supporting its own weight over a span of 6 meters. If a uniformly distributed live load of 6 kN per meter is imposed, evaluate the maximum working stress in concrete. The density of concrete is 24 kN per meter cube. So they have given the position of uh, the pre-tension. Pre so we can see here. So this is that rectangular beam. And as mentioned in the question, we have three wires of 5 mm dia each, three tendons at the top, which is at 25 mm from the top. And at the bottom, from the bottom at 65 mm, you have uh, 15 wires of 5 mm dia each. The overall depth is 300 mm and the width is 200 mm. And it's also given that the beam is uh, spanning for a 6 meters and the live load is given. And the dead load can be calculated based on the uh, density of concrete that they had given. Now, uh, so we have to consider this pre-tensioning, pre uh, pre-stressing wire, which is at an eccentricity E from the uh, center. And this eccentricity is the total depth by 2 minus Y, so which is actually 
50 mm. So from the given data, you can say that E is 150 minus 100 mm. So eccentricity value is 50 mm. Next, you need to, okay, so how this uh, depth by 2 minus Y. So Y is the actually centroid of the pre-stressing wires from the bottom of the beam. So we have a few wires at the top and few wires at the bottom, pre-stressing wires. So we need to find a common point where you can imagine that the entire pre-stressing force is concentrated. And so we are finding the centroid. So the centroid can be found using this formula that is area of all the wires into its centroidal distance from the bottom most. So with the respect to the bottom most line axis, bottom most x axis it is taken. So area of the wires into the centroidal distance which is at the top plus area of the wires into centroidal distance that is at the uh, bottom divided by the total area of the wires. So this is the general formula of the centroid summation of area into uh, y i summation a i y i by summation of a i right. So with that this is done. Now when it comes to area of all the wires we know that all the wires are of the same 5 mm diameter each which is pi d square by 4. So pi into pi square by 4. Now uh, because it is common in both the cases it is simply uh, it can be simplified saying that it is number of wires into centroidal distance plus number of wires into centroidal distance divided by the summation of the total number of wires and that is how this y or the depth of the uh, this you know from the distance between the pre-stressing red color dot to the bottom most is found as 100 mm. So once that is found, you can find the eccentricity to be 50 mm. So now we have these formula, right? That is F, F superior or F top, which means is the stress at the topmost level is this formula. And F inferior or F at the bottommost level is this formula. So we are just going to substitute in uh, there. So P is pre-stressing force. Area is the cross-sectional area. E is the eccentricity. We know that G is dead load and L or Q is the live load. And Z sectional modulus at the top and the bottom is I by Y. So cross sectional area of one wire because it's a circle cross section, circular cross section, pi d square by 4. So we have pi phi square by 4. The total pre-stressing force is pre-stress in the question, it was given that the pre-stress is 840 Newton per mm square. So that into the total number of wires will give me the total pre-stress. And this capital P on the left hand side is the pre-stressing force. And here what we have is the stress. So that stress is to be multiplied by the cross-sectional area. So load is equal to stress into area. So that is why we find the total number of uh, wires into stress into area and then we will get 3 into 10 power 5 Newton is the pre-stressing force. Second moment of area of the rectangular cross section we know that it is BD cube by 12. So we substitute in that and we get this 45 into 10 power 7 mm power 4. Area of the cross section is of a rectangle so it is just B into D and we get this 6 into 10 power 4 mm square. Now Z top and Z bottom has to be calculated. Z top means I divided by Y top. Y top means distance of the topmost fiber to the centroidal axis. When it comes to Z B, it will be I by Y bottom, which means distance of the centroidal axis to the bottommost wire. So in this uh, case, we have this y distance at the top and the bottom is going to be 150 mm only. So we get this i value divided by 150 mm. So y is simply the total depth divided by 2 because it's a rectangular cross section. Again, so zb is equal to section modulus at the bottom. So which will be i by distance of this which is both are going to be same because it is a rectangular cross section. We obviously know that the section modulus depends on the 
cross section so if it is an i section or a t section and then these things might change so next what we have is the self uh, the load dead load so dead load is going to be self weight of the beam so we have the cross section of the beam and we have to multiply with the density so that you will get 1.44 kN per meter which is in the form of a UDL and live load on the beam is directly given in the question as 6 kN per meter so now the moment due to self weight is going to be as, uh, because it's a simple beam with the UDL WL square by 8 right so GL square by 8 is substituted to get the 6.45 kN meter and live load moment is QL square by 8 and we get 27 kN meter so next the direct stress due to pre-stress so when you, when you have eccentricity we have two components one is P by A direct stresses and then we have the P by Z term for the um, due to the eccentricity so direct stress P by A is P is 3 into 10 power 5 by the area and due to the pre-stress we will have P by Z so in fact again because it is a rectangular section we have this uh, or we have to find P by Z top and then you have to find P by Z bottom separately so because in this case we have just Z T into Z T is equal to Z P we are just finding it as one P E by Z term so what we found was self weight moment the self weight stress due to that self weight moment is going to be M by Z F is equal to M by Z stress is equal to moment by section modulus and so we are finding this again in any problem we would have to do at the top you will have mg by z top at the bottom we will have mg by z b because the z is same here we will have just one term similarly you need to calculate for the live load stress so mq by z p and mq by z uh, z t and then we need to substitute in this formula to find the resultant stresses so the first term p by a what we have got is same thing is uh, represented in the graphical form so the first p by a term is 5 newton per mm square that is the stress due direct stress due to the pre-stress with that we are going to add this so on the top we have minus p by z t at the bottom we'll have plus b by z p and that value is again 5 newton per mm square the next is on the top we have plus mg by z t and at the bottom we have minus mg by z p so that is given so to remind you again plus is for the compressive stresses and negative sign is for the tensile stresses plus we have the um, mg by z uh, yeah, mq by z t and mq by z p which is due to the live load stresses which comes to 9 newton per mm square that we had calculated previously and now summing up everything to find the resultant stresses you will get this 11.16 newton per mm square on the top which is compressive forces positive and this 1.16 newton per mm square at the bottom which is the negative or the tensile stresses so that is how you calculate the resultant of stresses with the uh, formula and then the graphical representation of the bending stress diagrams so this is another problem where uh, you can see it is an unsymmetrical I section which means Z top and the Z bottom is going to be differing obviously so at every level we are going to find the stress at the top is be the value will be different at the bottom it is going to be different so in this case the I section details the dimensions are given and then it is saying that at the center of the span the effective pre-stressing force of 100 kN is located at 50 mm from the soft of the beam so 50 mm from the bottom of the beam you can see a pre-stressing force of 100 kN estimate the stresses at the center of the span section of the beam for the following load conditions so here when you are calculating the resultant stresses 
one we are going to calculate only with the pre-stress in the self weight and only in the second case we are also going to consider the effect of the live load so this is the unsymmetrical i section that is uh, given in the uh, question explained with all the dimensions and as you can see this circular uh, pre-stressing pre wire it was mentioned that it is at 50 mm from the bottom from the soft of the beam so it is there so first thing is you need to find where the centroid of the i section is there only then from that centroid to this fifth, this pre-stressing wire we will get the uh, distance of the eccentricity so initially you need to uh, find the centroidal axis of the cross section i section and on the right that we can see is you have a simply supported beam with the uh, 8 meter span and live load of 2 kN per meter that is given so also like we find uh, the centroidal axis we also need to find the area of the cross section which will be you can consider this cross section in split into three uh, rectangles so 300 into 60 plus 100 into 60 plus 80 into 280 will be the um, cross-sectional dimension so like i said first you need to find the centroid of the I section itself and then we only then we can find the um, eccentricity so centroid of the section so we have three rectangles so summation of a i y i by summation of a i which means for the first rectangle you're finding 300 into 60 area into y i right we are going to again consider the axis as the bottommost line so from that bottommost line to the centroid of the first rectangle which will be at 370 mm similarly for the second rectangle area is 18 to 280 into so center of this rectangle up to the bottom most that is again 200 mm then for the third rectangle you have 100 into 60 mm is the area and y will be depth of that divided by 2 that is 30 mm that is the numerator and at the denominator we are going to add up the entire area so y is 244 mm from the bottom of the section so 244 minus this 50 will give the eccentricity which is 194 mm and when you want to find the second moment of area of the cross section i because we need to find I to find the uh, section modulus also, right? So, section modulus is I by Y. So, to find I, we need to use the parallel axis theorem. BD cube by 12 plus A into H square. So, for because you have split this I section into three rectangles, you will have uh, no, three terms. BD cube I self plus A H square. Summation of I self plus A H square where uh, we know what is the width and depth of each rectangle area is the area of that particular rectangle and h is the distance between the centroid of that particular section and distance up to the centroid of the entire cross section that we have found previously so similarly when you add up all this you will get the value of 75.8 into 10 power 7 mm power 4 is the second moment of area now when it comes to section modulus it is going to differ at the top and the bottom because we found that the centroidal axis is at 244 mm from the bottom and from the top it is not the same 244 mm so it will obviously uh, be changing so section modulus at top is different and section modulus at bottom will be a different value the rest of the procedure is going to be the same we need to find the self weight uh, we are finding the udl by multiplying the dimensions with the product of dimensions with the density live load is given in the question the moment is wl square by 8 that formula is to be applied and the stress due to the self weight or live load will be uh, p uh, that is mg by z top mg by z bottom like that 
and this slide shows you how to calculate the pre stress so direct stress that will be simply p by a and p by z term is the due to the eccentricity but as we have the y value is differing so we'll have different z values also so at the top you need to find a separate stress due to the uh, eccentricity and at the bottom you will have a separate stress value for 4 newton per mm square at the top and 6.25 newton per mm square at the bottom similarly for the self phase stresses at the top you will have a different value and at the bottom you will have different value similarly for the, for the live stresses also so our condition was in the question there were two questions so one was to uh, it was mentioned that we have to consider only the pre-stressing and the dead load and only in the second case we have to include the live load so this is only with the dead load the last term is being neglected so this is the formula or as per the diagram graphical method we can find this so as we can see at the top most the compressive stress is just simply zero and at the bottom we have a compressive stresses of 5.5 newton per mm square so this is when you consider only pre-stressing effect and the dead load effect and when you add the live load effect we can see that the forces the stresses are changing the resultant stresses at the top is 3.3 newton per mm square and at the bottom we have 0.35 newton per mm square compressive stresses that is uh, displayed with this positive plus sign so there are few more problems that you can uh, work it out so here you have uh, just a rectangular cross section we have a effective pre-stressing force of 250 kilo newton so the force is given eccentricity is also directly given as 40 mm the live load is given now the two conditions are first condition is uh, calculate the resultant stress distribution at the uh, central cross section and the next one is find the magnitude of the pre-stressing force with an eccentricity of 40 mm which can balance the stresses due to live load and dead loads at the bottom fiber of the central section of the beam so in the first case what is given is a capital P or the pre-stressing force is given and we need to find the resultant stresses and in the next case what they are telling you is that if you have to balance the stresses due to dead load and live load what should be the actual pre-stressing force that has to be applied so this is the first case where we know that uh, P and the eccentricity so I'll just go through fast because it's the same procedure so you can just work it out and you can check with these uh, steps and the answers so this is the general uh, procedure that we do and we can find the stresses at the top and uh, bottom the second portion of the question was given is that f at the bottom or the inferior bottom level what if that stresses due to the pre-stress and stresses due to the dead load and live load is being cancelled which means if you want the stress to be zero at the bottom what should be the value of capital p so this is how you do capital p is alone kept as unknown the other values are substituted and you can find the pre-stressing force p so if you apply a pre-stressing force of 176.5 kilonewton at the same eccentricity of 50 mm we can have the stresses at the bottommost fiber as zero so this is another problem where you have a pre-stress concrete beam which has this live load and the span is 8 meters it is I section and the dimensions are given now here the pre-stressing force is 235 kilonewton at a suitable eccentricity such that the resultant stresses of the soffit of the beam at the center of the span is zero so you need to find the eccentricity of the force the second question if it if the tendons is concentric or you know there is no eccentricity what should be the magnitude of the pre-stressing force for the resultant stress to be zero at the bottom of the fiber so that problem is also like the previous problem you need to 
logically understand which level of the stress is zero and you can find the unknown E value. This is another problem where you have a concrete rectangular beam section. Now here at the center of the span of the beam, find the magnitude of the concentric pre-stressing force necessary for zero fiber stresses at the bottom when it is fully loaded. Second is if the eccentric pre-stressing is located at 100 mm from the bottom of the beam which would nullify the bottom fiber stresses. So subdivision A is what? If uh, what is the force if it is at eccentricity is zero and B is what if what is what could be the force if eccentricity is 100. The aim is the stresses at the bottom level should be zero. So this is the uh, rectangular beam that is given in the question. So we need to find the load. So we can just find ZT, ZP the live load moments and stresses dead load live uh, dead load moments and stresses and when it comes to these formulae you need to uh, the only the unknown and the logical reasoning has to be done so the, for the first addition it is given that it is concentric so eccentricity is zero and at the bottom the resultant stress should be zero so the second equation has to be equated to zero and p can be found in the next case, it is given that eccentricity is 50 and um, for that you need to find what is P. So the stress due to eccentricity also comes into picture and still the bottom stresses should be 0. So what should be the P value? So you can see that for this P should be 244.8 kN. This is yet another example that you can work it out. So this is the position of the uh, pre-tensioning pre wires and here the stress is given as 700 Newton per mm square and the eccentricity is also uh, mentioned. What is the maximum bending moment that can be applied to the section without causing tension in the soffit of the beam? So here we need to find this right due to this moment the stress due to moment that has to be nullified by the pre-stressing uh, stresses so instead of calculating the pre-stressing force here what we're trying to find is the bending moment m itself so these are just few variations of this uh, concept so all these problems are related to analysis of stress using the stress concept so we have seen a few terminologies that are in uh, regarding the pre-stress concrete construction and pre-stress concrete members, wires, strands, what is a tendon and cable. And we have seen how you do, how you analyze a cross section when it is pre-stressed and when it is loaded with the gravity loading under the concept of stress concept. So this is Eugene Fresinet, father of priestess concrete. So thank you. So if you have any uh, comments or questions, you could do so in the comment section. Thank you.